Okay, it looks like we are ready to get started. Welcome everybody to the third session of the Career Cafe. I am Josh Sloan, your host, and I am the Volunteer and Outreach Coordinator with Sportable. We are a nonprofit in Richmond that provides sports to people with physical disabilities and visual impairments. Um, the Career Cafe is produced by the Department of Aging and Rehabilitative Services and Virginia Ability in support of National Job Shadow Month 2021. The goal is to help students explore career options and opportunities in the state of Virginia. Today's segment will feature two guest interviews. I will be interviewing James Casey with George Mason University's Computer Games Design um, Department. And he will talk about the gaming design field. And I will also be interviewing Jim Wilson with the Virginia Restaurant, Lodging and Travel Association. And he will be able to talk about the hospitality field. Today's format is as follows. We will have an interview um, that I will conduct following my interview questions. We will open the chat for questions and answers from viewers. Um, when the question and answer period is open, to ask a question, just type it into the chat. Um, it sounds like we could use the uh, Q&A section on the chat. Uh, feel free to do that and we'll field questions from there. Um, otherwise, like, we should be able to keep up with them wherever they are, unless, you know, hopefully. But, you know, type your questions into the chat and we will answer as many as we can. If for some reason we are not able to get to all of them and there are pertinent ones that were not answered, we will be sure to follow up um, with answers to those questions by email or, you know, make a connection where you can find someone who can, who can help answer that question. Um, okay, I think that is all of the things, the housekeeping and so forth, which is good. So we can go ahead and get started. So as I said, our first guest is James with George Mason. Welcome, James. And our second is Jim from the Virginia Restaurant Lodging and the third thing. Um, what is it? Travel Association. Sorry, Jim. Welcome. Um, for these questions, I will start with uh, James and then I will transition to Jim. Um, and we'll try to stick with that if for some reason Jim is not being able to say anything new. We will switch at some point, but for now, that's what we're going to do. All right. So James, could you just give us a brief overview of your industry? Sure, sure. So uh, I'm, I'm going to talk really kind of about the idea of uh, designing and building games. Um, and this encompasses a lot of different things. It includes uh, the games that uh, a lot of people might be familiar with or they might have heard like uh, Fortnite or Among Us or Call of Duty or all of these, you know, name brand things that, you know, people hear about and go, oh, I like games. I like playing games. And, and there's big business in making games. Uh, video games have uh, out, um, out made, made more money than movies. Uh, and well, in this day and age with COVID, that's not saying a lot, but even before the pandemic, they were beating movies. So there's a lot of money to be made there. And it's a great career and it's a lot of fun. I did it for about 13 years for one of the big companies, Electronic Arts, and now I teach it. And what's cool about it is the same technology to make these fun games can also be used for teaching games, simulations, training, uh, all of that. So. I'm going to be speaking kind of just generally, I'm not talking about a specific job that I'm hiring for, for example, but the kind of jobs and the kind of things that you can expect if you wanted to work in games, whether they're entertainment or whether they're serious or both. Great, thank you, James. And um, Jim, could you give us a brief overview kind of of your industry, what you plan to talk about? That would be great. Sure. So the, the hospitality or, or tourism industry is actually quite broad, um, but overarching, it, it, it entails everything from, you know, hotels and, and lodging, um, restaurants or, or food service, um, event planning uh, to theme parks, uh, as well as transportation. So there's a, there's a number, it's, it's, it's quite a broad industry. Um, and I, I'll be talking about a little bit of all of this. Great, it sounds like we have a lot to cover between the two of you. Um, so James, um, what are the positions within the gaming industry that um, 
you know, folks on this call who might be interested in going into that field, what, what are some of the positions that they could, you know, look into or study to become a part of or what have you? Sure, absolutely. So I think that when people think about making games, uh, certain things do come to mind. Uh, like, you, you know, to make a game, you need somebody who's a programmer, somebody who can code. And that's absolutely one of the jobs in the industry is coders. Uh, and then art, right? You see a game, there's pretty pictures or vistas. Um, and so you need somebody to create those worlds or those characters. And, uh, but then there's also what we call designers. And those are the people that actually may come up with the ideas or they may um, create systems or they may be somebody who uh, helps the whole thing kind of come together like a producer. Uh, there's writers. Uh, there's um, quality assurance testers. Uh, that's one of the questions I see waiting in our queue. You know, somebody has to test this stuff and that's often a very good entry level job because you get used to what is needed to make games. Uh, but, but what's really interesting is it, it's, uh, it's got so many other jobs. I mean, we need managers, people that can lead. We need people that can uh, market the game, get it out there. You know, the, the, um, so, you know, we take a variety of folks, regardless of their background or interests, and there is a way to fit into games. So if you like the idea, it's great. And what's really interesting, and I mentioned this already, is there's a lot of crossover. So if you've seen or heard of the show, The Mandalorian on Disney, Great show. pretty much all the background stuff you see like the ships and the worlds that they're walking on that's all being created in the unreal engine uh, and actually played on screens behind the actors and so it's like they're right in front of a giant computer screen and a game is playing behind them and it's the same stuff that you would need to make any other type of game so learning how to make games and being part of that process opens up a lot of different jobs so there isn't just one job for making games, there's a lot. And so depending on what you like to do, there's bound to be something that fits into your wheelhouse. Awesome, thanks James. And um, Jim, how about the, um, you know, hospitality industry? I know I, I certainly have had some hospitality industry jobs in my day, but. Yeah, so, so, so as I mentioned you at the start, it's, it's a very broad industry. Um, and with that, there's, there's a, a number of different job opportunities. Um, so if you think of a hotel, um, there's everything from housekeeping, front desk, um, sales, we, you have maintenance engineers, uh, you've got general managers that oversee the entire property. Um, and then many hotels also have a food and beverage component. So whether that's a, a full service hotel, or excuse me, full service restaurant, or if it's a grab and go or a, a breakfast area like a, a Hampton Inn. Um, and then on the restaurant side, you've got everything from, you know, dishwashers, hosts and hostesses, bussers or, or resetters, um, the servers, you've got bartenders. Um, you've also got general managers or, or director of operations on that side as well that kind of oversee the entire uh, facility. Uh, and then obviously in the back of the house, you've got cooks, you've got your chefs at different levels. You've got, you know, line, line cooks, sous chefs, executive chefs. Um, but then, you know, there, there's, uh, there are pieces of this, of the industry that you don't think about. So, you know, once again, we go to marketing. Uh, you've got marketing people, you've got, you know, people that do the books. So you've got accountants. Um, and then if you think even more broadly, uh, we've got, um, you know, tourism destination. So you've got marketing organizations that, that market uh, their city. So here in Richmond, we've got Richmond Region Tourism. Um, you know, you, ha you have uh, marketing agencies for every area around the state. And then you've got the statewide Virginia Tourism Corporation or the, the Virginia is for lovers people um, as, they're, as they're more commonly known that, that really market our state um, to you know, tourists from other states to come and visit our, our state. Um, likewise, you know, locally, you know, Richmond, Virginia Beach, uh, Roanoke, we've got, um, you know, you've got local tourism people there uh, that, that are marketing their, their cities um, for people to come and, and visit and, and really just to spend your money whenever you come and visit. Um, so it's, it's, it's a very, um, 
you know, the, the, the jobs that are, are available are just as varied as the industry itself, really. Awesome, man. Thank you. I'm glad you mentioned line cook. I was a line cook for a while. It's like <laughs> one of my favorite jobs of all time. Um, all right, James, we're going to switch back to you. What are like the highest demand jobs within your industry? And I think you kind of split this up into two categories. Um, jobs that are, you know, high demand that don't require a college, college degree, as well as jobs that do require a college degree. Okay. Uh, I think if you if you looked at ones that require a college degree, uh, typically programmers are going to be high up on the list. Good programmers are always needed. Uh, they've made it easier to make games. Um, Non-coders can do a lot of things that are required to make games. Mm -hmm. But even so, in uh, bigger games or some of the bigger studios, coders are always going to be very much in demand. Um, good artists kind of are the second tier of that. You know, you're finding somebody who's very good at art and can output it and get it done consistently is great. Mm -hmm. um, they may or may not need to have a college degree as an artist. Um, they still want to know that you have some skills. So even if you don't go to college, they'll want you to have played with, you know, Photoshop or some of the tools, you know, that are out there for making models or graphics. Um, designers and writers, um, they have a mixed bag. Sometimes you can get a job without a college degree if you can show again that you have skill in creating or coming up with ideas. Uh, but sometimes they will want you to have a college degree because it's a little more uh, well-rounded. Um, but like, for example, I got into games and, and I had a business degree. So it wasn't that I had a degree that was games related. It, I could use it to make games because not many people have business skills, you know, when they're making games. Um, and then what's really cool is uh, we also have some entry level jobs that don't necessarily need college degrees, but can get you started down that path and help you show that you have the ability to be in the field. And those include the, the tester programs, the, the quality assurance uh, that I mentioned earlier, as well as customer service. So I worked on online games and, and a lot of games are actually doing online services now. So they have to have folks that are gonna be able to respond either on the phone or in chat or email to help people that have problems. And oftentimes when you take this job, even if you don't know that much about making games, they're gonna teach you the tools and they're gonna teach you about how games are made because it will help you to help the customer or to help you to find bugs. And often those are the first people then that are looked at for promotion within the company. So there are a wide variety. So depending on you know, where you're at and, and what your goals are, uh, game industry is still accessible and there's a, still a starting point for pretty much anybody. Very cool. What, what was your first job in the gaming industry? So my first job actually uh, was uh, customer service. So I, uh, I had actually got a, a college degree. I got my master's and I did uh, retail management. So I'd been doing customer service um, for like a big box department store, you know, like Best Buy. And it was not my cup of tea. I didn't, I didn't like it over time. And so I took a part-time job with a local game company because it, it sounded fun. And because the only thing they were hiring at the moment was customer service, I was like, why not? And then as I learned it, I, I went on full time. And then I became a team leader because I had management experience. And then from there, I went into creating you know, quests and characters and being a developer, a designer. And then as that went on, I became a manager and then I helped to manage everybody. So I became a producer. And so I kind of ran almost every game by the end. So that's awesome. It's you, you can start right at the very big you know, bo bottom of the, the heap, so to speak, um, and move all the way to the top, you know, regardless of your background. Sure. And I think that's something that's really important to note and, and recognize about working for any large company or corporation. You know, so many people start at a company like Capital One in a call center and you just stick with working there for a long time and you just continue to move up within that company, it can really become a great career. Um, 
Jim, uh, let's let's turn it over to you. Uh, what are the highest demand jobs within your industry? Like, what are the, you know, the one that sort of like the, I don't want to say bottom of the pile, but you know, the, the easiest jobs to get, I guess. <laughs> it's not good. So the, the the great thing about the industry, the, the hospitality industry, is is that. Um, you know, it is, it's the first job for, for many people, if not, you know, the majority of people, their first job is, is somewhere within the hospitality world, whether it's a restaurant, um, you know, hotel, because they, there are a number of different entry level positions where you don't need, you know, a college degree um, or any, you know, uh, um, you know, any ex extensive education. Um, however, great thing about it is, is just like the gaming industry, you know, you can you can work your way up, um, and so you know there are some of the jobs that don't require a college degree. You know, obviously housekeeping, um, but really, I mean, you know, some of them such as sales, um, you know, things of that, that nature on the on the restaurant side. You know, really, you you do not need a college degree to to do um, any of the roles. You know, whether you know if if we're going kind of up the the pyramid, you know the you know, starting off with being a dishwasher um, or a host or hostess, um, you know, a busser or a resetter, um, you know, server. Um, none of these really require uh, a college degree. Um, and even, you know, being a chef, many chefs, they, they kind of take one or two routes. Um, some start off, many of your, your best known chefs started off as a dishwasher um, and never went to a culinary school. Some did, you know, many did, um, but but some don't, uh, and they just work their way up through the industry. Um, so there are there are options for both. If if you're interested in in post secondary and going to college, um, there are a number of schools around the, the state, a number of community colleges that have a culinary program or a hospitality program. Um, many high schools uh, have a, a culinary program, so it's. It's great if, if you're still in high school, it is great to, to take one of those courses in high school because you know, many, many students go into this saying, I like to cook, I cook at home. Um, being a chef is very different than you know, cooking for yourself, cooking for your family. Um, it is, you know, it's extremely intensive, um, extremely fast paced, um, extremely stressful at times. Uh, it's 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 very different than you know enjoying and cooking at home. So, you know, taking those courses at the high school level um, gives you an idea of what that environment is like. And then you you know before you go to post secondary and spend money on a on a degree that that you might not actually enjoy. Um, you know, work you know, it's it's a great opportunity you know working in a restaurant because you get to see before going to college um, and spending that money on a degree. Um, to, to make sure that you enjoy this industry. No, absolutely. I, I certainly couldn't agree more, especially when it comes to working in the back of the house at restaurants. If it's doing like a, a culinary class in high school is would, is a great, great way to, to check it out. Um, by and large, unless you wanna work in like molecular gastronomy or like a very fancy restaurant in New York or LA or something to, of that nature, very few people that are elite, elite chefs go to culinary school. It's not a huge, huge need. Um, start washing dishes somewhere is the best <laughs> is the best way to become a chef, honestly. Um, cool. Well, let's go back to James. Um, James, we've kind of talked about this, but I think there's I think there's a little bit more we could say. Um, what skills and knowledge do you need to be hired for the types of jobs in the gaming industry? So um, let's say, you know, what are some valuable like soft skills, you know, meaning, meaning things that aren't necessarily directly related to the industry, as well as, you know, what are some things you could study or be good at, you know? Sure. Let's start with the second part of that question first, and that's kind of skills based on the job. Um, and I think this kind of depends on what you want to do in the industry. So, uh, and just like Jim was saying with some of the, you know, taking culinary classes, et cetera, we're seeing a lot more 
that game design classes are being offered either in school or as off after school programs. And we actually have the Mason Game and Technology Academy where we try to push and offer those classes for folks. Um, and, and we don't expect that people have any knowledge of these before they go in. But what we always tell people is start to look at what is needed. So for example, if you wanna make games, there are a lot of tutorials on the internet that you can find. Um, one of the biggest game engines is called Unity. And so Unity is this tool that lets you put everything together. You know, you take the art, you take the code, and it puts it all and makes it work. Uh, and so you have to be familiar with the Unity game engine to some degree, um, regardless of your position, because it's all going to be put together in a similar, uh, if not Unity, something similar. And so if you just started there, they have excellent tutorials that can walk, you know, somebody with no experience in coding, no experience in art, it will give you all the art, it will give you all the examples, and you can make some games. They have um, racing games or platform games, you know. Uh, they even have now uh, games that you can create where uh, they're Lego characters and you can just put things together and it, and it works. Um, and so, but if you really wanna get into say coding, then you're gonna to have to probably pick a language uh, just like you would, you know, like you pick Spanish or, or French or something and, and you have to learn another language. You need to pick a coding language like C++ or C Sharp. Um, and for artists, you wanna look at some specific tools, uh, Photoshop uh, or uh, a big one that people like is um, Blender. It's a uh, modeling and animation tool that's free. Um, there are others that we teach uh, like 3ds Max, but most of these tools, you can get free trials and or free, completely free editions to learn and get started. And so those are places to start. The biggest thing you can do is just start playing with the tools that are available to you and seeing what you can do already before you learn what else you need to learn <laughs> is essentially what it comes down to. I, you know, and then, you know, if, even if you want to start in a, a, a entry level job, like we mentioned, quality assurance, the more you know about games, playing them, being familiar with them, uh, even playing with the engine, like I just mentioned, you're more than likely going to do better in the position and be able to get better pay, uh, better jobs, you know, get, get to different areas in the company quicker because you, you know what you're talking about. Sure, absolutely. Um, how about some of those kind of soft skills that we were kind of... Almost made me miss that one, uh, <laughs> soft skills. So this one's actually pretty important. Um, and I know this one's probably the toughest for almost everybody in our program, myself included. Um, I am an introvert. Uh, at heart. I'm sitting here talking to you, but I'm not a person that normally is just going to be outgoing and just in somebody's face and telling them everything and being excited. Um, but one of the things that you should practice is taking what's in your head and putting it down onto paper or putting it down into a picture or, you know, onto a web page. What people want to know is that if you have an idea or a vision or you know things like that, that you are able to communicate it. And, and again, this this there's going to be different things that you have to deal with, whether it's you know me being an introvert or shy, or you know, um, you know, maybe there's tools or adaptive things that we need to use, but it, it doesn't matter at the end of the day, you just need to be able to communicate. Uh, and if you can start to, to practice that, you're going to do better in almost every job that you can think about, because every one of them interfaces, you know, talks to, uh, you see them, you, you deal with it. And I'm sure Jim will probably say that in hospitality too, right? The more you can interact with other folks, um, and, and we're not talking, you know, you have to have a, a, a long 
thesis on why a game is doing something. No, you just have to be able to say, look, here's what I think and why. And so that's probably the social skill that I think that most people kind of forget. It's like, I tell people, if you can, if you can learn how to use like uh, Microsoft Word or a Google document and understand how to put your stuff out of your head, right. that's a first step. Oh, that's great. Thanks, man. That's, that's really great advice. Um, Jim, how about you? We can, we can, we certainly, we've certainly hit cooking and we, <laughs> for it up to be, we would just like have this long drawn out conversation where we just talk about cooking stuff, but um, tell me about some, you know, some soft skills as well as some more like technical um, requirements for getting into some of these fields that is, you know, encompassed within the hospitality industry. Definitely. I mean, I, obviously, you know, if, if you're customer facing in the hospitality world, um, soft skills are crucial, you know, so there's communication skills, um, you know, just being hospitable um, is, is huge. Um, but really when you, when you think about it, it's a lot of those, those kind of 21st century skills. So, you know, critical thinking, creativity, uh, being able to collaborate, especially, I mean, if you're, if you're working um, on, on the restaurant side uh, or, or really any position, I mean, on, on the hotel side, um, you know, collaboration and, and communication are, are huge. Um, being flexible, um, you know, problem solving. I mean, on a, on a daily basis, you, you're going to be dealing with problems um, in this industry. Uh, so problem solving skills are going to be huge. Um, but, you know, just as Jane mentions, I mean, there, there, are, there are some roles where that, that aren't public facing. I mean, if you're back of the house, um, which is essentially, you know, on the restaurant side in the kitchen, um, you're, you're not public facing, you're not dealing with the public. Um, you're dealing with other chefs, which eh, you, you, who knows which is worse to deal with. Um, but, you know, so, um, so there are, there are roles uh, within, you know, on the restaurant side where you are not public facing. If you're back in the house, if you're a dishwasher, um, you know, a busser or a resetter, you're, you're dealing a little bit with the public, but not as much. Um, you know, or, or if you're on the, on the, on the line, if you're a cook or, or a chef. Um, likewise with, you know, on the, on the hotel side, um, housekeeping has minimal public interaction. Um, a night auditor would be a, a great position if, 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 you, if you don't want to interact with people as much, uh, where you basically, you know, you work the graveyard shift and you go over uh, the sales for the day. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, you know, obviously uh, if, you, if you're public facing, you know, the, those, those, um, those communication skills are, are, are huge. Um, being hospitable is, is a huge part of, of the industry. You know, hospitality uh, is, is in there. So, um, you know, what, one um, GM that I work with, you know, said that they hire for personality and they can teach them the rest. So, um, you know, it's, it's one of those where Every restaurant, every hotel has their own systems. So, um, you know, Marriott has, has their own systems. Hilton has their own. So, you know, they're, they're gonna hire you for, for your personality, for your drive. Um, really, they, they wanna show, you know, they wanna see that you um, can show up to work on time, that you're consistent, they, you know, that you have a positive attitude, um, whether you're public facing or not. You know, they, they, wanna, see, they wanna see that attitude. Um, and same on the, on the restaurant side, you know, every, every restaurant from your, your local independent mom and pop to your, you know, fast food or quick service to your, your, you know, your corporate, um, type restaurant, they're all going to have their own system. So, so they're going to hire you for, you know, your attitude, um, and your personality, and then they'll, they'll work with, work with the rest on for you. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, it, w one thing that we talked a lot about last week that you brought up is, is showing up is, is really important. I mean, particularly, I think in the hospitality industry, you know, from my experience with restaurants, if one person doesn't show up front of the house, back of the house, it doesn't matter. The way that the structure of the workforce is organized is like a machine. And if one person doesn't show up, you take a cog out of that machine. So if one chef doesn't show up, one third of the menu isn't getting cooked by the person that's supposed to cook it. If the rest, if the dishwasher doesn't show up, no one's there to clean the dishes, which needs to happen constantly. If one server doesn't show up, then, you know, one fourth of the tables in the restaurant, if they get full, they're not gonna have somebody to get there. So 
Absolutely. I mean, punctuality and like reliability are huge in that industry. Huge, huge, huge. Yep. All right. Let's see. Um, James, let's, let's say somebody is at an interview um, in, in the gaming field. What's a, what is like a manager or a, someone who's going to be hiring this person? Um, what are they going to be looking for in, in a potential employee? Sure. Uh, it, it will differ based on the jobs. Uh, obviously, whatever job you're going in for, they're going to want to see that you have skills. Um, so they're going to want to know that you, as a programmer, that you you know how to code. Um, and so they'll look for those skills, you know, uh, the, the tools that you can use or the degree that you may or may not have. Um, but ultimately, they're going to look for uh, two other things. One, what you've done with those skills. So, you know, if you like games, you know, and you want to be a tester, have you signed up for alpha tests or beta tests that are, you know, free to the public just so you can get some experience? Um, if you're a artist, do you have a portfolio of art? If you were a programmer, did you make something? You know, or as a designer, did you create a game or did you find a team and work with them? The more that you do with your skills that you can show off, the more they know that you actually be able to use the skills. Because it's one thing to say, hey, I know how to use Unity. And you're like, okay, how do, I, how do you prove that? And the easiest way is to show that you've made something or done something with it. And the second, is, uh, I think we talked about this a little bit, is it's that kind of personality. They want to know that, you know, because there, there may be a lot of people with coding skills, but they also want to know that you're going to be a good fit in their, you know, they, they call it culture, right? It's, it's, are you going to be able to fit in and work well with others? Uh, and so they're going to look for, um, you know, did you work on teams before, um, you know, projects together, you know, things that show that you can work with other people. Uh, and it's, it's going to vary to a degree how much that is important um, based on the position. But ultimately, it comes back to that. It's, it's a communication thing, right? They're looking for somebody to put into the job. And, you know, in an interview, it's your, it's your job to teach them why you would be good at that. <laughs> and so part of it is I can do it. I have proof and I'm also a cool or good person to work with. Hire me. Right. No, you, you bring up a great point, which is that you're going to spend hours of your life with these people. You know what I mean? And so they want to know that you're a person that they would want to spend hours of their life with. And I think that's something that gets overlooked pretty often. Um, Jim, how about how about you? Same question. What what you're you're sitting down for an interview, maybe at a hotel, at a restaurant. What what are managers looking for in the in that internship? I guess I kind of answered on the last one, um, but it you know attitude is is crucial. Um, you know, and then you know, as I said, you know the the, the HR manager that I spoke with, they they said you know they, they hire for attitude, and and then they teach them the rest. Um, and I know, you know, in an interview, there they are. Interviews are awkward. You know, job interviews can be an awkward thing. And so, um, you know, going into it, just having a positive mental attitude, um, you know, being prepared um, for the job, knowing a little bit about, you know, the industry or the ho the hotel or the the restaurant that you're working for, knowing, you know, what type of food they prepare or you know, the hotel knowing, you know, what their, their target audience is, uh, things like that, you know, really help. Um, but really, you know, attitude is huge. And then as you, as you go up, um, you know, the scale, they'll want to know what skills you have. So if you're looking for a chef position, they're going to want to know that you have those skills. So they're going to want to know, you know, that you've worked somewhere before, um, things of that nature. Likewise, if you're, if you're applying for a, a general manager position, they're going to want to know, um, you know, on your resume, where you worked before. Um, even if you haven't had a general manager position, um, either in a hotel or a restaurant, 
the, the general manager is, you know, almost like the quarterback. So they need to know about everything. They need to know if, if you're on the restaurant side, they need to know front of the house and they need to know back of the house. Um, likewise, on the, the, the hotel side, you need to know housekeeping. You need to know maintenance. Um, you need to know food and beverage. You need to know every little aspect of, of the hotel. Um, so, you know, as at an entry level position, I mean, I would say that the, the biggest thing is is attitude, um, knowing that that you're a you're a team player, that that you know that you'll get along, um, and that you're you know that you'll be uh, responsible and dependable is 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 a huge component of it. And um, you mentioned like general manager positions at hotels, general managers of restaurants. Is that something that someone could study, um, like at a um, you know secondary level, college, uh, you know? community college, something like that? There are. So there, there's a number of uh, schools within the state that, that have hospitality or, or tourism programs. Um, George Mason is one of them. Uh, George Mason has a hospitality program. Uh, Nova uh, up in Northern Virginia has one. Um, Tidewater Community College down in Norfolk has a, has a great hospitality and as well as a culinary program. Um, here in Richmond, we've got Reynolds Community College. They just built a brand new gorgeous facility facility specifically for their culinary program. Um, you know, Virginia Western in Roanoke has a great culinary program, Central Virginia in Lynchburg. Um, so really, you know, all, or, all across uh, Virginia, there are hospitality and culinary schools. Uh, Virginia Tech and James Madison both have um, top-notch, uh, you know, nationwide uh, ranked uh, hospitality schools as well. Um, as so does uh, Old Dominion University. So there's there's a number of um, you know schools around the state that you could go to for either hospitality or culinary. Absolutely, man. Um, James, that's going to kind of transition to you on that. Um, certainly, you could pitch George Mason's gaming program. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, what what do people start? What are the majors? I guess you know, like what are you studying if you're going to do this at the secondary level? Um, so uh, nowadays, and not when I went to school, but nowadays we have um, uh, game design undergraduate as well as graduate degrees. Um, and it depends on where you go. So to be, to be honest, um, in Virginia, we're one of the few that have a, a true game design program. And ours is also different than some game design programs you may have heard of elsewhere in, in the entire United States. Um, so sometimes when you go to school for game design, you might be in like the computer science uh, portion of the university, you know, engineering. So it's very, very programming oriented and only programming. And in fact, GMU has you know, computer science and, and, and a, a track for game design. Um, but they don't concentrate on games as much as we would like to see in the industry. And so uh, the other option too, is you see art schools where people go in there just for the art side of things. What's interesting about our program, uh, and you're seeing this, uh, I think, catch on a little more, is we actually teach uh, folks how to do every part of a game. So at the end of our program, you could technically make a game by yourself. It's a lot of work, but you could do it because we do teach you the basics of how to make art and animation and programming and design and audio and putting it all together. And then, then you specialize in what you like. So if you find out you like art, you take some additional art classes in our program and you'll probably be an artist in the field. But what's really good is because you learned a little bit about programming, you know what they can do, or you've learned what designers are gonna ask of you because you've done it. And so this, this kind of idea that we teach you a very wide set of skills, as well as a very deep set of a specific skill is very useful in the industry. We found that um, when I was in the industry making games, people with this kind of knowledge base, you know, a little bit of everything, but really specific on something, mm -hmm. tended to do a lot better, um, you know, coming out of that. Right now, undergraduate degrees uh, typically are designed around getting you right into a job with one of the big companies 
or even starting your own company, which we try to encourage too. Um, graduate degrees are typically right now more research oriented. So those are folks that are trying to figure out where gaming is going next um, and doing it more um, thinking about games than actually making games. So there's a little bit of difference right now between a graduate degree and an undergraduate uh, college degree. But, you know, it, it, depending on what you want to do, I mean, I, I think the, uh, the degree programs like you'd find at a Mason or, you know, elsewhere, they are very good at setting you up for uh, getting a good job. And the nice thing is, you know, like in our case, it's a college degree. So you're also going to be introduced to a lot of other things that you have to take. You may not like them. You may not want to take calculus or, you know, math or, or science or English. But what's really good from a, a, an employer standpoint is they know you have this broad base of knowledge. Again, sure. just like if you had said, came in and like, I only know games, that's great. But we want people that also know what other things are out there because, you know, you're going to make a game based on Viking history. You should probably know Viking history, uh, you know? So there's, there's all these different things that kind of go into somebody being good at their job. And so a college degree is a way to get a well-rounded view of knowledge and skills. Absolutely. And, you know, it's another thing that I think going into a field like gaming, and I'm more so thinking about, to be honest, film. Um, a lot of folks find that their biggest value they got out of film school is the classmates that they made and the network that they develop right. while they're there. Because all of a sudden, some, you know, one of your closest friends from your gaming program, he goes and designs the next Call of Duty. Well, he needs help. He yep. trusts you. You guys have worked together before. And that, yeah, so absolutely. And it also goes to the ability to at the end of the time that you're in school, you know, you can even start this in high school, but you know, by the end of four years in college, you've worked with so many people making games in classes that you can show off those games, which means that you have the skills because it shows that you did something with your skills mm -hmm. and it shows you've worked in a team. And so you've all, you already almost have job experience in the way that at least our program is set up and so that's really attractive to employers because it shows you're already kind of doing it. It's not like you're just saying, hey, I like games. I want to try it. And again, there's nothing wrong with that. Start in quality assurance and start to learn it. That's kind of like the learning entry level position. But, you know, if you go to college or a degree or one of these programs, uh, you're going to be much more hireable. Absolutely. All right. Let's see. Jim, I'm going to come back to you and we are bumping up against the Q&A time. So I just want to ask you kind of a final question here to sort of put a bow on everything that we've talked about. Um, what is one single piece of advice that you would give someone looking to find a job within your industry? Is that for me or James? Jim. Okay. Um, you know, I think you, you touched on it earlier uh, and James and Josh, you just supposed to, you know, networking, um, you know, find, I would say, find a mentor. Um, this, you know, this industry is great because, you know, you can go and you can go to the Culinary Institute of America or Johnson and Wales, um, you know, and spend 40, $50,000 a year and come out with, you know, an associate's degree um, and become a, become a chef. Or you can start off as a dishwasher learn the industry, work your way up um, with zero debt um, and, you know, and become a, an executive chef um, or become a, a general manager, depending upon what side, uh, you know, if you wanna be back in the house, front of the house. Um, this, this job can take you anywhere that you want to in the world. Um, I work with chefs that are their personal chefs that will travel the world with, people and be, you know, just essentially they're, they're, they're personal chefs that travel the world. Um, I work with chefs that, um, that we, do, we do a competition every spring. And it's interesting because we have chefs that, that travel around the country to this. And it's amazing that they all know each other and they talk about each other. So you can really, um, you know, networking is, is crucial in this industry because it, it can, 
you, know, you, you develop your reputation for, for good or for worse. Um, so if you've got a great reputation that can take you anywhere you wanna go. Um, if you don't have a great reputation in this industry, you know, the, the word will get around. Um, but yeah, networking is, is a huge component um, and, and finding a mentor. Absolutely, man. All right, James, how about you? Do you have a single piece of advice for folks looking to find a job in gaming? Sure. Um, I, I kind of probably already said it, but just That's start right. learning and doing. The more you can just start doing what you want to, like if you, if you want to be a game designer, just start designing games. If it's a board game, if it's a, you know, writing down like rules for a game, just start doing it. Uh, because the more you can practice and the more that you can show that you can do something, the more likely you're going to get a job. So really that's the best advice. If you start doing something, it will make you better. Absolutely, man. Awesome. All right. Well, this was all great information and we have gotten a ton of questions. So let's get to as many as we can. Um, let's see. I'm going to start with Linda because it's right in front of my face. For individuals, this is for James. For individuals looking at entry-level jobs in the gaming industry, do they use Indeed or Monster-related websites to job search? And what would be the title that they should search for? Uh, yes, um, indeed, uh, monster, as well as um, looking at uh, game publishers websites. So if you want to look for a, a job with electronic arts, there's like jobs.electronicarts.com. <laughs> or actually, I guess it's jobs.ea.com. But every every individual company is going to have their own job listings uh, as well. They will typically put them on job search sites, too. And what you'll need to do is based on what you want to do is just look for terms like somebody said in there, game tester, quality assurance, things like that. And as soon as you start to see those jobs in one place, you can look for additional words that they have in common so you can keep searching and find more. Sure. Um, but yeah, you want to you want to go several different places to look for jobs because sometimes it'll be on uh, the company site to start with. And if they get enough people, maybe they don't even put it on the other site. So you have to look at several different places um, and just keep trying. Absolutely. All right, uh, Jim, I have a question for you. Um, this comes from Aaron. I do want to get hospitality training so I can open my own bakery one day. What do I have to do to get that training? So there's a number of different ways you could do this. So you could, um, and you know, baking is, is a completely you know, it's a, it's a separate, its own entity. So you could um, start working at a local bakery. Um, and as I mentioned, you know, just work your way up. I mean, so ask questions, you know, the, the, the owner of that bakery, um, baking's one of those ones where it's, you're there early in the morning um, because you, you've got to have your stuff ready for that, that breakfast time. Um, so, um, but you could, you know, start, start working at a local bakery um, or, you know, you could go to one of the local culinary schools. So depending upon where you are in the state, um, you know, I, you know I, I rattled them off earlier, but there, there, there's really, you know, there, there's a culinary school pretty much in every part of, of Virginia, um, you know, from Virginia Western and, and Southwestern Virginia Community College is actually starting up a culinary program this year um, to TCC in Norfolk. Um, Patrick Henry has one down in Martinsville. So no matter where you are, so you could go and get culinary training at, at your local community college uh, as well. Absolutely, man. Thanks, Jim. And one thing you should definitely do is you should bake a lot. You should bake all the time. If you want to be a baker, you should bake. Um, but yeah, definitely be prepared to get up in the morning. I, I lived with a baker for a while and he, he clocked in around 2.30 a.m. Um, every day. All right, let's see. James, James, got another one for you. Can you name two or three? This is great. I was meaning to get to this as well. Could you name two or three employers in Virginia or one or zero, if those don't exist, um, that hire entry-level positions um, in the gaming field, as well as like, if you could name remote employers, um, it would be great as well. Sure. Um, and one of the things that we may do is, I know we got a bunch of questions still in the Q&A uh, section, 
Uh, if worst comes to worst, I can start typing answers in there just so people get answers before we run up against our time. Sure. Um, but um, Virginia used to have game companies a little more. Uh, they're the closest one that's um, hires a lot is Bethesda. Um, they make a bunch of great games. Um, they're up in Bethesda, Maryland. That's probably the closest big game publisher that hires a bunch of entry level positions in this area. Uh, the alternative in this area is actually more serious gaming. So there are companies like Lockheed Martin or Booz Allen Hamilton, uh, basically companies that are corporations that need to make simulations or training, maybe make a computer generated truck for a commercial. You know, the military needs to make a model of a tank before they actually build the tank to make sure it, it does what it needs to do. So there's a lot of government and corporations around here. Those are good places that on Indeed and Monster, you could also look for potentially entry level positions. Absolutely, man. Thank you. And you are right. I, I am. There are a lot of gaming questions in the Q&A and I, James, I would encourage you to to answer as many as you feel compelled to, because we will not in any way, shape or form, get it all up to them. Um, Jim, I do have another question for you. And, and both are about night shifts. One is what happens if someone asks you to work a night shift. And the other is what certifications are needed to be a night auditor. And I think um, both of those could, you know, be answered pretty quickly. So the, uh, the American Hotel and Lodging Association, um, they have a number of certificate programs um, and certified hotel administrator is one that would be a great uh, certificate to, to get for being a night auditor. Um, and, you know, if somebody asks you to be a night auditor, it depends on it, A, if that fits your schedule um, if, if that's something that you would be interested in, um, you know, you do not have to, you know, you don't have to take a job that you're not interested in. Uh, there are, there are, there are multiple roles within the, the hotel uh, field that, you know, if it's something that interests you um, and you're looking to go towards management, um, I would say that that's something that you would want to do for, you know, potentially just to get, you know, that background um, and understand what that job entails. Um, but you know you don't need to take a job that, that you're not interested in. Absolutely. Um, all right. Let's see, um, James. I imagine you're probably as overwhelmed as I am trying to field all these questions and figure out which ones to answer. Um, let's see. I am trying to look for an internship. What what's the best way to find an internship? Um, so, James, if we could maybe get a little bit of information on internships within. The gaming world, um, sure. specifically locally, would be great. Yeah, I think um, so. I'm answering a bunch of these. And so if somebody saw a question in the Q&A section that they really liked, if you weren't the person who put it there, but you want to know, it will be in the answered section. So you can see the answers as I type them real quick. Um, I think we kind of answered this one. You look at Indeed, look at Monster, look on the company website internships are always going to be posted in those same places. And again, in this area, uh, Bethesda, and then some of the corporations or even government, if you look on Indeed or Monster, just look for those terms, game test or, or entry level design, you know, just start putting those terms into the search engine until you find something that you can apply for. Well, I think a good question, honestly, for you, James, at this point mm -hmm. is, is there like an online resource that you're aware of that is, is, a, is a good spot to sort of, you know, learn about the gaming industry and ways to get involved in it and, and you know, maybe somewhere that, so you're not spending the next five hours answering questions like that's a actually a good, folks. That's actually a good question. There are, there are some gaming news sites out there, um, but there's also some professional game sites and I'm actually having to look them up to make sure I, I give you the right information. Um, there's a, uh, and I might just type these in chat in a minute uh, so Please that do. you don't have to. Uh, there's a site called Gama Sutra. There's a site called gamesindustry.biz. And again, I'll type these in so it'll be easier to see. Um, there's also, gaming news sites. And again, a lot of these are going to have information 
that can point you to, oh, hey, look, people are hiring or there's things going on. And they'll also teach you about it. Uh, but like I said earlier, one of the first places you might want to go look is uh, Unity. Uh, and I'll put that website in the, in the chat in, in one second too. Because again, if you start there, it will talk about a lot of the different things you need to do to make a game and will start to walk you through how they are done. And that way you can get an idea if that's what you want to do. So right. I'll, do, I'll do some uh, typing in chat real quick. All right, thanks. Um, Jim, we've got another one for you. How does contract management fall into this field? So with contract management, um, you know, for, for large hotels, they have a number of um, you know, different um, events that happen. So there are, you know, anytime you do some sort of large event, there are multiple contracts that go with this. Uh, with an event. If, if you've ever had to put on, uh, we, we do a large event every year um, here in Richmond and the, the, the number of contracts that go with this uh, are staggering to say the least. So, um, you know, more so on the hotel side, but if, if you have um, on the restaurant side as well, uh, you know, with, within um, catering or events, if you, have, if you have an event space, that there are a number of different ways that, that contracts are involved with that as well. Great, thanks, man. All right, I think I think we're probably going to have to wrap up um, just because I don't want to go over 530, um, but we would like to thank um, Jim and James so much for their time and participating in today's Career Cafe. I think that we learned a whole, whole lot about two very distinct industries and lots of ways to get involved with both from, you know, very entry-level positions to, you know, the totally top of the... Um, industry, saying industry a lot today. Um, if you are looking for more information on these careers and just careers generally, please visit the Virginia Ability website at www.virginiaability.org. Um, also, please check out the links that James sent. Um, those are great places on the gaming industry. Uh, Jim, would I go so far as to say that the company like the organization that you work for has a good website with um, good information on getting into hospitality? You're muted. Yep, there I'll put go. some in the chat box. That'd be awesome, man. Thank you so much. Um, sorry to throw that at you out of nowhere. Yeah, <laughs> um, on Virginia Abilities website, you'll find great resources um, for all kinds of stuff about getting jobs, specifically um, getting jobs with a disability. You will also find Virginia Abilities Jobs Ability Portal, which helps connect individuals with disabilities to jobs. Um, let's see. We hope you can join us next week. Um, I will be interviewing Gerald Ford, yes, Gerald Ford, like the president, from the Pennsylvania County Sheriff's Department, as well as Quincy Choice, who is with HCA Healthcare, and he will discuss medical billing, as well as, I imagine, some other um, fields within the medical industry. Okay, I think we are ready for the raffle. So, Kathleen, if you are here, and you I are am. Able to share your screen and do the raffle. Let me get this started. And there we go. Okay, here we go. Um, what we're going to do is um, make sure the individual is here. So if your name is called, please put your name in. Um, just acknowledge that you're here. If this is your last name, and if I could have um, some of the co-hosts check out and see if that individual is it, it, one of the participants. I'm looking in the I'm chat not box. In They're the, not? I don't, I don't see, see that. that. Anything coming up in chat? Are we yeah, ready to... Okay, we wanna spin one more time. Here we go. Is Boxley on?
Somebody said yes. Yep. Yes. All right. There we go. Okay. So an email will be sent to you um, to let you know about the um, the gift card. Awesome. Well, thank you all so much for attending. Um, James, Jim, you guys were great. Thank you so, 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 so much. We really appreciate it. And uh, attendees, this is the end of the show. Please come back next week. Um, and everybody, hopefully you stay safe and warm. Hope everybody keeps their power. And um, yeah, thank you all so much. And we will see you later. Thanks to our interpreters. Yes. Sorry, thank you to our interpreters. Thank you so much. And, I and the captioner. I apologize for any typos I'm making in, in these quick <laughs> answers. I, I apologize. I'm trying to knock no, them out. <laughs> stay on as long as you need to, man. Answer, awesome. answer. Don't answer. worry. Great, great presentation, guys. Yeah, that was awesome. And you had a huge crowd, so good stuff. Interpreters, you're good. Thank you. Right. Thank you. That was great. I, um, can somebody, um, I can't get to video. Not that I want to be seen, but. <laughs> James, uh, this is LaPearl. Thank you so much. Really appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And thanks for connecting with Rick Sizemore also. You'll, you'll enjoy engaging with them. This is right. Betsy. As, is, what was the final number of participants? Did anyone get that? Um, we had 119. Wow. Wow. Oh, okay. I knew we were over 90, pushing 100 last time I looked. Yeah, 119 was the last I looked. Wow. Kate, I don't know if you had anything different. Including panelists or yeah. just... Hey, okay. let's end the recording because we're going to send this out later. I'm going to jump off. See you all next week. Bye.